ladies and gentlemen, Mac McClendon. <laughs> <laughs> I was born and raised, uh, I, mean, I was been in New Orleans since I was about four years old and living in the Lower Night Ward practically all my life. Um, my first uh, apartment was in the Lower Night Ward. I worked for the phones company straight out of high school. I wound up uh, getting hurt after about four and a, I mean 11 and, and a half years. I fell off a ladder and I damaged two discs in my lower back. So I started getting disability and, uh, and I was kind of bored. I needed something to do. I was always fascinated uh, about anti cars. So I figured, uh, I got a perfect time to do that, mess with antique cars. So that, I picked it up as a hobby, and uh, it was really, really good because I could go to antique car shows and get little parts and tinker with them and put them together, and it was, it was amazing to see something that looked like junk when you bought it, and then you make it look so good, <laughs> and everybody wanted it. <laughs> Just before Katrina hit, I um, found my uh, a car just like the first one, my first car that I had. It was a 1962 Tempest Pontiac. I was crazy about that car. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was candy apple red, and I rubbed all the paint off of it. <laughs> <laughs> So finding it again, you know, yeah, I was really excited. Uh, it was in great shape, uh, and I had been working on it maybe about two and a half months before Katrina hit. I had other cars. I had, matter of fact, I had about 14 antique cars, and, and um, most of them was convertibles. Uh, <laughs> I love com muscle car convertibles. But anyway, um, when Katrina hit, it took all of them. It took my cars, um, it took, uh, it damaged my house, and we come up in a, a place where it's, you say you are what you have. What happens when you lose everything overnight? I know what happened. I tell you, I was numb numb for five months. I was hoping it was a bad dream. I was hoping I'd wake up and I didn't lose everything. But every day I woke up, it just kept getting worse. Until one day I said, hey, you bigger than that. You, you gotta get up. I've, I've been going to this uh, mechanic shop in my neighborhood is, I was fascinated by the building. It was a huge airplane hangar looking uh, warehouse. And I used to go over there and uh, I really wanted this building, but I never could afford it. It was too expensive. After Katrina, one day I passed by it and Katrina had knocked big holes in the roof and everything. I said, if I'm ever gonna get that building, it's now. <laughs> so what I did, I went to City Hall and got the owner's name and his number and everything, and I called him. And uh, he said, um, I asked him, you know, I, I would like to see the inside of the building. I, wanna, I would like to purchase a building. He said, OK. And then we set up a date, and he came out. And uh, we went inside of the building. and. Um, the structure was still good. It had looked like everything could float, though, from Katrina was in there. But I said, that's good. I could get it cheaper. <laughs> but anyway, he said uh, he's going to go and do his paperwork and everything, and he'd get back with me. 
Well, he took too long. I, 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 I kept passing by the building every day, so I, I went and got my lawnmower and got my friends, and, and, and I just started cutting the grass, you know, because I, I and it just so happened he called that day, and, I, and he said, what you doing? And I said, I'm cutting the grass by the building, because if you don't cut the grass, they're going to make it a dumping ground, and they're going to throw everything there. He said, look, when you finish, could you please come by my office? I said, okay. So I finished up, and I went by his office, and he said, I don't know how this is going to work out. It takes the time to buy a building and stuff like that, but I know i got to give you these keys. And he gave him the keys, and I was excited. I ran out of there trying to beat the daylight because it didn't have no lights. I wanted to go inside of the building by myself. So by the time I got back, it was just too dark. So I, that was, I had a restless night. I got these keys in my hand, so I'm waiting on daybreak. So daybreak hit, I'm in that building. And I tell you what happened. I went through the back gate and opened up these big, huge doors. And I stepped in there about four, no, about 12 feet. And like a ton of bricks, I tell you, I start thinking about this community center that I, that I considered my sanctuary. And uh, it had everything that you wanted in there. I mean, if you wanted to sing in the choir, if you wanted to, to play basketball, if you wanted to learn how to cook, all these things was in there. But I'm trying to figure out, well, why am I even thinking about this? It's 40 years ago. I just want to tinker with my antique cars. <laughs> so I, I, I couldn't shake the feeling. And I wrestled with it a couple of days. I said, okay, I'm going to go to the town hall meeting, and I'm going to ask them, do they want to uh, turn this into a community center? Hoping they say no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's what I wound up doing. I said, look, let me tell you guys. Well, let me, let me tell you this first. I knew only 10% of the people were back, and I knew they were so busy trying to get their lives in order. They, they're not going to have time to come out for this, I figured. Anyway, I, I went there and I told them, I'm going to give you two weeks, you know, to come out. We're going to do groundbreaking, and if you want a community center, that's what we're going to do. If you don't, I'm going to do my antique cars. <laughs> well, two weeks came. Almost the whole community showed up. I said, I'm in trouble. But, but, but I'm hard-headed. I, I, I didn't give up. I, I made out some little four-by-four four cards, and basically it said, if you wanted to become, not like Uncle Sam, if you wanted to become a community center, what can you do? Put them right on the spot. I figured they wouldn't fill out a card, and that was a nice way of telling me they didn't want it, which was fine. I do my empty cards. <laughs> well, all, I said, okay. After all of them filled out a card, I said, okay. Uh, I started really, really thinking about it. I said, this many people um, want to make this happen. Who am I to stop it? So that moment, I'm, I made the decision to do it. We're going to do this community center. I got to tell you guys now, that's the best decision I ever made because I learned so much about what's important in life. I thought it was my things and my cars and, and my house. What's important in life is people. My mother is a missionary and she always tried to keep me on the right track, but if she said go right, I went left. But this time, what came up was when you're doing bad, someone is always doing worse. Well, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to just do better. That was so true, and I'm living it now because the opportunity to, to help and be a part of this and learn that um, I didn't lose, I lost material things. I didn't lose my life. I didn't lose no immediate family members. So I had a lot to be thankful for. 
So I didn't know which way this was going to go. I just know I need to be a part of it. I could tell you some things that I've felt about this. It's very important. I was all about me before Katrina. And after Katrina, I realized it's not about me. It's about empowering people that can't empower themselves. 75% of my community is still displaced. I created this mural. It's called, Where Is Your Neighbor? And I want to do everything in my power and try and bring them home. But I found out I couldn't do it alone. I found out that if you allow people to know what your problems are, they could really help. I thought people didn't care. I thought my government didn't care. I found out that they do. People care so much. They never stop coming. My government had never faced a disaster as big as Katrina. They panicked. But people never stop coming. So I know if we pull together and start caring about each other and help when we can help, it'll be a better, much better world for it. So now, it's not about me. It's about we. Thank you.